right, YouTube, I'm back. Um, got my filter right there. Uh, got a new seal on my bolt. <clears throat> That's the sealing washer that goes on there. I uh, got the inside all cleaned up, nice and pretty. Uh, one thing to check is make sure the uh, relief valve works. Should spring open. If it overpressurizes, it'll it'll vent. So. Make sure that's still in working order. Um, clean it up real good. Make sure you get the uh, the edge of it right there where it's going to sit on the O-ring. Make sure that's nice and clean. Um, I got the cylinders apart and it's not what I was expecting. I was expecting a full rebuild kit to totally rebuild the RAM assembly as far as like the end seals, which is right here, and then the piston inside you know it has the scraper ring and the pressure ring and on the piston so I was, I was expecting to be able to take the whole thing apart but it's not like that on these um, it appears that when it's assembled this edge right here I don't know if it's welded or pressed in or what but uh, it acts as a stop for the piston so it won't come all the way out and it's pretty much dead end right there so you can hear it stop. Hear it. And that's it. The uh, all the seals that are right there, they came out of the end. And let me see if I can get my light so you can see it down in there. It might be too bright. <clears throat> not the best quality video with this phone here um, there it is all right so I mean you pretty much just have the stop which is right here that's part of this piece right here it's not coming out past this so when you get your seals and stuff everything goes down inside here and it pretty much seals the shaft to the housing so that's about as far as you can go with resealing a steering shaft on a Ford tractor as far as the 3000 model anyway um, if your cylinder does not work they do offer kits and replacement cylinders so this right here, mine was already working, and I just need to reseal the end of it because it was leaking real bad. So, <clears throat> the power steering pump. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the reservoir and the filter assembly on. Um, one thing to keep in mind, that'll go down in there like that. See how it has the spring action to keep the filter tight. But one thing to keep in mind <clears throat> with O rings, whenever you're going back together and you have an O ring fit like this, you're going to want to make sure you lube this O ring. Because if you just slide the housing on, you could roll the O ring or cut it. And if you're not sure, you've never worked on one of these and you don't know how this O ring is going to react to oil. The best thing to use is vegetable oil. Vegetable oil does not react with rubber, the nitrile in the rubber. It won't cause it to swell. Um, some oils, motor oil, like say diesel 1540, if you put it on some O-rings, it'll actually cause it to swell and it'll swell fast on you. So if you're not sure how the O-ring is going to react, you don't know exactly what it's made out of, go safe and go with vegetable oil. I have some right here. You just take your finger, make sure it's not got any kind of crud or anything all over your finger. You just want to run it over the o-ring, get her nice and lubed up.
all the way around. And if you want to, it wouldn't hurt. It shouldn't react with anything in the actual reservoir or in the hole. Take your finger, put some on the inner lip. It's going to make everything go on nice and easy. <coughs> okay. So, um, not how sure, not, I'm not sure how hard this is going to be. That's not going to stay on there. So I'm going to have to put this in the housing and stick the bolt in the back to get the filter to stay in and not fall completely out. I'm not sure how good that's going to work. It's probably going to be a little bit aggravating. But if you can juggle it, put that on there, make sure it's square. You can always catch your finger in the fill hole and move the filter around. But you got to make sure it stays in there nice and square. That rib right there is going to help it seat real good. Um, like I was saying, there's not going to be a rubber seal anymore, at least not on this filter here. Um, the rise in that filter is going to seal the surface, so it's going to be metal to metal sealing surface. So let me see if I can put this thing on real quick and hold this phone at the same time. I don't know how aggravating it's going to be, but I'll try it. Oh, and another thing before I forget. Um, if you look, you'll see this little notch right here. There's one here. There was supposed to be another one on this other side, but I don't see it. Um, that right there actually locates the housing. There's a rise right here, and that is going to hit on here. So you can only have it a certain ways. So it acts kind of like a, a locator, but you know you got a little bit of room to work with. So just make sure you don't <clears throat> get it right on that on that locator and bend the housing right there. <laughs> All right, well, I guess this is going to be a two-hand job because it's not you can see the filter in there you just kind of gotta get it lined up with it. Let me see if I can put this right here and stick my finger in here. Try to get it worked in. Okay, so I've got it on. I had to stick my finger down here in the bottom and kind of pick that filter up a little bit. You can see the filter inside the fill hole. Um, once you get it halfway on there, you can run your bolt up a little bit. And you can tell by that spring inside that I show you that puts tension on the filter. It'll You'll feel the spring. Just make, make sure you don't... 
get that little locator pin caught. See how it is? Now that's not hitting the alternator, that's the locator pin. So, we'll get our 13 millimeter wrench and just uh, run that up a little bit, nice and easy. Give it a little spin, make sure it's not hitting. Okay, everything looks good so far. Make sure you're even. You don't want to be crooked going up in there. Alright, looks like we're all the way flush against the housing. Um, you can look up in the specs to see what the torque is on that. Um, also, when you're putting these lines on, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to just leave it a little bit loose. Because when you put these lines on, you're going to probably need to rotate this housing a little bit to get the right angle on it. This one here, you could tell somebody had messed with it. Um, the angle wasn't right. The lines were off. Um, it looks like looks like they had rubbed. It probably rubbed a hole in one of the other ones. So you can see there, somebody brazed it up there, and uh, yeah, right there. So doo doo weld. Um, that's pretty much it for the reservoir. Uh, it takes a two and a half quarts roughly to fill that up and then it might take a little bit more once you have all the lines put on. I mean, all of the fluid that was in the lines is gone so you might have to put a little bit more in there. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, the cylinder was a little bit of a, a bugger to get out. All the seals. So right there is pretty much exactly how it came out. You have your snap ring that you take off first and you're gonna have this little collar that holds everything together and you have a shaft seal here and it goes facing down like that that little ring was on top so that face is like that and then this face is like a cup inside and then in the bottom you have your seal another seal this seals the housing and the shaft together. Kind of a nasty thing. Um, it, this was the hardest part to get out. You'll see if you get all the rubber scraped off around it, and it still doesn't want to come out, you can take, and you, the shaft will be right in here. You take your pick, and you can stick it in there at an angle, between the shaft and the seal and don't push too hard because you don't want to scar the shaft you can then hold the shaft like that and pull the shaft up and it usually pulls this seal out with it <clears throat> I say it usually will but it did for me and it was pretty easy doing it like that so um, like I said after you get this stuff out it bottoms out and it stops right there so all these seals are for nothing but sealing this end right here it has nothing to do with the functionality of it if it if it doesn't work and it's blowing past the seal on the piston this isn't going to fix it so if it's doing that you probably need to get new cylinders so let me get this back together and i'll get it put back on the tractor and uh, get the system filled up and i'll uh, show you how i bleed it